Good morning. It is 6.49 on Wednesday morning. I am very tired because I've been getting only six hours of sleep instead of seven hours of sleep every night for the past three nights. And I think it's catching up with me and it's the first week of school, so there's just that tiredness as well. Um, I am just going to school early all week this week just to make sure to avoid traffic because I feel like that whole first week sometimes parents are always going to drop their kids off at school so there's more cars on campus in the morning so I'm just getting there early this week just to avoid that because I learned my lesson on the first day of school when I could barely get on campus. Um, it is back to school night tonight. I spent some time doing the slides that I need to do for the presentation that Taylor and I are going to do. It's a joint presentation. It's virtual, which is disappointing, but understandable. Um, so I did all the slides that I'm responsible for, and then she just needs to do her slides. And at some point today, we'll have to come together and make sure the slides make chronological sense and that there's nothing that we're missing. Because every year there's something that we have to add from the district, like a welcome back, back video, excuse me, or some piece of information. So I got that done, and by the time I went to bed last night, I was at a level of tired where you just aren't even, like, coherent. <laughs> like, you can't do basic tasks because you're so tired that you can't concentrate how to on how to do the task. Um, so I went to bed at 11, woke up at 5, which is not enough sleep. My goal is always to get 7 hours. Um, so today, I'm going to go in, and in today's vlog, <laughs> I'm going to really try and focus on sharing with you the procedures that I feel are critical for me to make sure my classroom runs run smoothly, and most, if not all of these procedures, are procedures that I just carried over from my life as an elementary school teacher. Um, so a lot of the procedures that I use in elementary school still work very well for me in at the middle school level and I need to start putting those in place starting today. So um, I definitely think um, the kids are gonna be put in number order. <laughs> and there's a couple of classroom jobs that I need to have and things like that. They're getting put in assigned seats based on like ability levels so that we have mixed ability groups and all that's gonna happen today. So I'm gonna try and make sure I share that. Um, Throughout the, day, throughout the day and then after school it should be a little bit interesting because first I have to meet with our assistant principal along with the other union rep on campus because we have a slight union concern well it's not slight I mean it's pretty significant a union concern just with the number of minutes of duty that we have before and after school um, this year our duty minutes seem to have increased inexplicably um, we always have uh, duty either before school or after school on a rotating basis and the frequency of those duties has increased this year despite no change I believe in staffing um, so we're gonna meet with the assistant principal to talk about that we think it might just be an oversight because our assistant principal that we're talking to is new to the district and didn't have to deal with this last year because we were all virtual so he just may not know the history of like what is acceptable and unacceptable in terms of giving teachers duty. Also, back to school night is tonight, so that is something that I have to be here for. I think that starts at like 6 or 6.30 and it's not done until 7.30. But in between there, I'm going to try and go home, you know, to let Riley out. Um, luckily, Riley's not behind the gate a lot because my mom proctors out of school nearby and then she has this block of time in the middle of the day that she goes to my house to eat lunch and like spend time with Riley so he's actually not even being gated um, at this point but after school I'm gonna try and go home after that meeting and cook a green chef meal so that I have dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow because yesterday I had to DoorDash dinner and I had to order two chicken bowls from Wama Grill because I also realized I had no food for lunch because I thought I was gonna be cooking last night and then I was gonna eat the leftovers for lunch so it should be a pretty busy day um, but Again, that's how it goes with the beginning of the school year. So I'm just looking forward to getting some things done and like locked in place and getting to those days where I'm not getting six hours of sleep and that I'm not getting home um, as late as I have been. So 
I'm gonna tell myself that this is the start of me getting on that path. But anyway, I'm at school, getting ready to park. I'm gonna try really hard to be better about checking in during the day. But I am so thankful that you guys are understanding if I don't, because it's, it's a hectic time of year. So, but I will talk to you soonish. It is 8.56 and I have four minutes of prep left. <laughs> so, I'm eating breakfast. I'm vlogging at the same time. I'm just eating yogurt with granola. When I came in this morning, I numbered all the desks based on K and grouping so that there's a seat one, two, three, and four. Um, again, my class is grouped in tables of four and each table group has mixed abilities, so there are kids at different levels. So I needed to label each seat so students knew who was in seat one, who was in seat two, who was in seat three, who was in seat four. Got that done. And then I also cleared the stuff off my counter over there. The library books or um, the novel that we're reading, All Your Twisted Secrets, the, or the mystery or suspense novel that we're gonna be reading with Unit One of Study Sync, um, came in and I forgot that I have actually about 60 students when I teach middle school so I only ordered a set of 35 and I realized that as I was labeling the books this morning because every student needs to have their own copy and they need to be using the same copy and they'll keep their copies in their mailbox and I'll show you that a little bit later today when I have time. So I just emailed the district librarian and let her know that I need about 20 more copies and so she's gonna try and get those to me as soon as possible because it's not a novel that we have in bulk here at the district. So I did that and then I reset both the Kerplunk jars and I will also show you that later on today when I have more time. So I was very productive. Um, and then I made some copies and then I panicked a little because my display wasn't working but it just needed to be updated. <laughs> So we got that done. I got my homeroom class to line up in number order. So that is key number one. In middle school and elementary school, we live and die by number order in my class. It just makes my life easier in a lot of different ways. So they always line up in number order. Two lines, the class is split in half. I think the way it works right now, numbers one through um, 13 are in one line and then 14 to the end of the line are in the second line. So I told them you will always line up in that order. And then when they go to Taylor's class, same thing. They came inside, I taught them the routine for the morning. So when they come in, music is playing. The music acts as a timer. They need to unpack, get themselves situated within that time frame, write down their homework or any reminders that I might have. And then by the end of the song, they should theoretically be done with that. So we practiced that. And then I also started question the day question of the day is how I take attendance. So today's question was, how old are you? So I'll call their number, that's the bell. Number one will answer by, or number one will answer the question of the day, and that's how I know that they're here. And they will either say yes if they're buying lunch, or they will say no if they're not buying lunch. And then I submit attendance. So we're, we're on the road of getting them into my routines and procedures, and that will give me a lot more mental peace and clarity. But with that, I gotta go, open the door, let the kids in but I'll share some more later. It's, it's 7.30. We just finished back to school night. It went really well. <laughs> Taylor is on our way over here because we're trying to do outfits of the day for the first week of school. That's a video that I'm gonna try and put together. Fingers crossed that I can get it together. Um, and I haven't shown you what I meant to show you when I was talking to you during my prep period. So when she leaves, I'm gonna buckle down and I'm gonna show that to you guys so that I don't feel like a terrible vlogger. 
every day I'm just telling them I'm a terrible blocker. Like, sorry guys, tomorrow I'm gonna be better. Yeah. And they're like, you say that every day. You said that yesterday. Stop lying to us. <laughs> so, so, I was just telling them I thought back to school night went well. Would you agree? I would think it went very well, actually. Yeah. The second session, there was no questions. No, it was like, it was like crickets. We just, yeah, we just it. killed every single detail. At that least was that's needed. what we're telling ourselves. <laughs> or they were all tired. So yeah, we're gonna do outfit of the day. Although you're kind of seeing hers. And Sneak then, peek. remember how I said I was gonna go home and cook this morning in between? <laughs> <laughs> I did so it. Funny. I have no dinner, and that means I have no lunch tomorrow again. <laughs> We're struggling. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. No. So stay, stay I'll talk to you later. We do this. All right. Well, I'm home. We got kicked out of the classroom because the principals were arming the school. We left at about 745. So I didn't get to show you the things that I wanted to show you today in relationship to like classroom management things that I just have to have. Um, and I don't remember how I phrased it this morning on the way to work, but um, I know I mentioned that what I was doing during my prep this morning is I was numbering the student desk. That's very important. And then I was sorting the um, novel that we're going to read together into mailboxes. And I think I talked about um, having kids be put in number order. Um, and so I think my intention is just to kind of share you, with you a couple of things that I did in both the elementary school setting and the middle school setting that just work really well for me. And so one of those things is just always having kids line up in number order, turn things in in number order, um, just because it makes it easy for grading purposes, tracking purposes, remembering kids names at the beginning of the year and so they know anytime we go from one place to the next and we line up they're always in number order there's no negotiating that there is no if ands or buts about it so, to, so today I gave them their numbers and we started that I also use the numbers with randomizing who I call on in class to respond to questions so I have one of those Kagan spinners and hopefully I'll remember to show it to you tomorrow where you put in the number of students that you have you press a button and it just randomly selects a student number and they know that if it lands on you then you're answering the question so I did that um, I also got back into having classroom jobs like really because I've been out of the classroom to some extent for the past year and a half even though we had the last six weeks of the school year together last year um, it's been like two years since I started a school year in the classroom with students so it's slowly but surely coming back to me like what are all the things that you do and teach and train the kids on at the very beginning of the year that really helps you out throughout the school year so I remember I definitely need kids to have jobs I don't have as many jobs um, as I did when I taught elementary school but I need someone to answer the phone I need someone to be in charge of keeping the Chromebook charging cart organized. That's a two-person job. I need someone to file grade at work into mailboxes. Um, someone to open the door. What is on my hand? Someone to open the door. Someone to turn off the lights. Someone to... I'm missing one. There is one I'm missing. Um, and then I need kids that keep track of table points. Those are the jobs that I definitely am keeping this year and um, table points kids earn for just doing just the things you want them to do in class, but you want them to do them efficiently. Like the table group that gets their materials out first, gets the table point. Um, calling on students to give an answer, giving them a point if they get it correct. Um, today we went to the library, lined up in number order, just like we did in elementary school, played the silent game, just like we did in elementary school, which is exactly what it sounds like. Nobody talks. Made it worth a large amount of table points. It was worth 30 points. And giving them reminders, like my expectation is when we go to the library that your behavior is just so pristine that the librarian gives you a compliment, has nothing but positive things to say. And if that happens, then you guys get to pull a stick out of your kerplunk jar, which I will show you tomorrow because I got kicked out. Um, and that worked. And so even though these kids are 13 years old, they still, I mean, it still feels good to do things well and then get compliments. Kids still like winning. Kids still want a piece of candy, even if it's just a little Jolly Rancher. And they did it and they participated fine. And you can tell that they, even though they won't say it, 
I think at any age, kids like being in a classroom environment that's very structured and organized and predictable. So even at this age, even the kids that talk or are more talkative or seem to be the most resistant, eventually appreciate the fact that there's a lot of structure and there's a lot of organization in how we do things and how we move about and how we communicate and interact with each other. So we got all of that started today and I just already feel better. Not that I was feeling bad before, but it helps me to stay sane as a teacher when I know that there's structure to things and that the kids know the structure. So I had to take both my homeroom and switch classes to the library. They got a compliment and I was choked up for them. <laughs> Um, and so they they were proud of themselves I was proud of them and then we walked back to class in number order just like we would have done in elementary school and it was fine and they were polite like I always say make sure you say thank you to the librarian good morning to the librarian good afternoon and they and they did that so um, I wish I could have shown you or talked about these in real time because I'm trying to make sure I touch on everything that I wanted to and to show you the Kerplunk I'll try and remember to do that tomorrow, but I know I've talked about it before in the past. But I think the basic point I wanted to get across in today's vlog, even though I didn't get to vlog it the way that I want to, is that if you've taught elementary school and you are now thinking about middle school and you want to know about classroom management, for the most part, a lot of the things that you do at the elementary level to manage your class work very well at the middle school level. Or if you're contemplating middle school and you get frightened by the idea because you just envision these large scary teenagers I mean they're really not that even the ones that are the most challenging are not that scary no matter how hard they try to be so I'm feeling good about today we didn't get to any lesson like m what my intention was to teach my intention was to get into history a little bit more and start talking about the concept of race and how they define race and how do they know what race they are because I think for the history that I teach it's very important that we start off that way because there's going to be so many different groups throughout what we study that are identified as racial groups um, that have been disadvantaged that have been in positions where they were taken advantage of that have been in positions of power and we need to understand how that even came to be like how do we even get groups of people that were categorized this way so that they could be in positions of power or that they may be taken advantage of? So we were supposed to do that today using the give one, get one routine from the Making Thinking Visible book that I've been talking about all summer, but we didn't get to that. So that we're going to we're going to bump that to tomorrow. And so hopefully I can share that with you. But my battery's running out both metaphorically and physically on this camera. I need to figure out what I'm going to eat for dinner and how I'm going to have lunch tomorrow. And I'm super duper tired. So if you enjoyed today's vlog, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you're not following me on Instagram, head over there and follow me at Smarty Style. And as always, I hope that you guys are well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Good night.